The penultimate race in the 2013 Real Sim Racing Full Throttle Cup Series is upon us, and that brings us to none other than the Phoenix International Raceway for chase race number nine, and two to go until we crown a champion. Alongside Harrison Wildlitz, my name is Evan Posoko. Thank you for tuning in to ETV Motorsports Live again on this Monday night. Again, two races to go until we crown a champion in Harrison. It looking like right now Chad Cole has that points lead going his way but anything can change yeah certainly he has the advantage right now uh but as we've seen multiple times throughout this chase we've seen 20 plus point swings multiple times and so uh chad knows that he cannot rest on his laurels or be overly conservative he's going to go out here and try to win this race so that he can feel really good by the time next week comes and these cars are at homestead mathematically he can put it away tonight taking a look at the points chad cole up atop the points championships right now. Dwayne Vincent sitting position two, 27 points back. And then CJ LeVere, 30 points back in the third spot. Then you take a look at the fourth place driver, Guy Snyder, the fourth. Over one race out of this thing, pretty much eliminated from this competition, unless we really see a wild turn of events here. 54 back, fifth place, Rich Jett. 63 points back and rounding out the top half of our chasers is Jose Gonzalez, 66 points off the leader, Chad Cole. Yeah, and, and currently in seventh right now is Ronnie Potts, who's been a, a regular visitor to the top 10. Uh, unfortunately, struggled last week, lost a lot of valuable points and positions. Justin Wilson currently eighth in points with two wins on the year. Mike King uh, sits in ninth. Steve Ritter with three wins on the season is currently 10th in the standings, followed by John Abbott and Mark Brasher. Coming off of last week's race at the Texas Motor Speedway, Chad Cole going in on the defensive, entering that race with a 22-point lead, and he leaves with a 27-point lead because last week he went to victory lane to pick up yet another win, number 10 on his 2013 campaign. However, Dwayne Vincent right there, but not close enough, finishing second, and CJ Lavera finishing third, so the top three finished in the order that they are currently sitting in the point standings. Guy Snyder the fourth taking home a top four finish, and Mike King also rounding off the top five. Dave Lanza finished sixth, and uh, he had a lot of speed early on, actually got involved in a wreck, and his car looked like it had just come out of a race in Martinsville, but able to recover, finished sixth. Rich Jett came home in the seventh spot, followed by Brian Harvey in eighth. Steve Gottschalk uh, finished in ninth, and Kevin Linden, a newcomer to the series, uh, actually got a top ten. And definitely, so that makes us look forward to tonight's race at the Phoenix International Raceway, located in Avondale, Arizona. Capacity crowd of 67,000 on hand, plus um, the general admission seating for those that are camping out on that mountain there in turns number three and four. The track itself is classified as a D-shaped trial, however, it's kind of backwards. The front straightaway is flattened, and they got that dog leg on the back straightaway. Uh, four turns, turns one and two banked about 10 to 12 degrees, three and four. 8 to 9 in the back straightaway where that curve is, 10 to 12 degrees as well. So lots of varying banking. However, this model of this racetrack in the iRacing service, uh, there's no pavement inside of that white line or the yellow line down the back straightaway. So you're not going to see drivers jumping down there trying to pick up some speed uh, because there's grass down there. So that could throw a little bit of a curveball. However, the people in iRacing, they're used to this. This is the model. Uh, so that kind of will change up the racing a little bit than what you'd say if you watched the, uh, the Sprint Cup Series race on the weekend. Yeah, this, this uh, model of Phoenix International Race, it was laser scanned uh, before the repave a couple of years ago. And so this is a classic Phoenix, you could say, tonight. And uh, as you mentioned, the grass and the, uh, the inside of that little dog leg going down the back stretch, that is something to avoid uh, because there's curbing at the entrance to that. A lot of times if someone gets loose out of uh, turn number two, which you will see uh, throughout this race, if someone loses control of their car or gets sent around, uh, a lot of times that curbing uh, can continue for a, a wild ride. And so uh, these drivers are certainly going to be looking to keep it on the pavement. Uh, this track is uh, a little rougher, uh, obviously, since before the repave. And uh, it's driven a little bit different uh, than we saw the Cup guys, uh, for instance, run it yesterday. Uh, but certainly a flat track. Uh, and uh, it just takes a lot of finesse and you can't miss the line. One of the keys to the race is going to be saving your tires. I had a chance to talk with CJ LeVere entering tonight, again, third in the championship standings, 30 points back, telling me that he has a fast car. He's looking forward to the race. He wants to keep it up front out of the trouble. 
He's not going for points. He is going for that W. So that's the same mentality, obviously, that the Wayne Vincent's going to have P2, again, being 27 points back. Anything can happen, but you really have to go uh, for broke here and try to get everything you can going into the season finale, obviously, next week on ETV Live at the Homestead Miami Speedway. Again, you're watching live coverage of the 2013 Real Sim Racing Full Throttle Cup Series. Brought to you by Bob Earl Racing. And again, whoever wins that championship is going to walk away with the VRC Mark II Virtual Racing seat from Bob Earl Racing. And that is a simulation racing cockpit designed by a championship race car driver, Bob Earl. Who better than a real race car driver to design a simulation racing cockpit? After all, he knows what it means to be comfortable behind the wheel. The design features a fully adjustable seat and frame. Additional monitor stands and shifter mounts are sold separately. Proud sponsor of the 2013 RSR Full Throttle Cup Series, a high-quality and affordable virtual racing cockpit, priced at just $349 plus shipping, so check that out at www.bobearlracing.com. Certainly these guys going for that prize. We've heard the drivers mention it. It's in the back of their minds throughout the season. They were really going for it uh, and certainly have uh, two races left. Uh, right now, it looks like Chad Cole will be the victor, but... Um, as we've talked about, anything can happen, anything has happened, and anything has happened three or four times throughout this chase. Uh, and so uh, these guys go in for that top spot. And um, looking at looking at tonight's, uh, it's it's interesting the qualifying order and actually how you approach turn one on these starts and restarts because uh, it seems like a trend for the last couple of weeks is you know you mentioned you don't really want to be second. A lot of times that guy P2 on the grid on, or excuse me, during a restart has a lot of trouble getting to that low side, gets stuck high, and the high side's not the place to be. They lose spots. However, here at Phoenix, these guys are going to be doing a really wide arc entering turn number one, arcing it down usually to about halfway down the track, not even going to the bottom except maybe very early on. And so Chad Cole right now is provisionally sitting second on the qualifying order where uh, Dwayne Vincent's currently third. And ordinarily, you would you would say, wow, Dwayne's going to be able to uh, scoot on by, get into second relatively quickly. But here at that high side, you could actually hold someone off coming through one and two. And restarts can get really, really hairy throwing it down there into turn number one with a big pack right up on your back bumper. Another thing to note, this is our second trip to the Phoenix International Raceway in this 2013 season. When we were there for race number two on the season, it was none other than Mr. Number 13, Dwayne Vincent going to victory lane just to keep tabs on our championship leaders. CJ Laver finished 12th, and Chad Cole 24th. So just some more statistics to keep your eye on as we go into tonight's race. Again, you got to take a look. Right now, 15, Rhett McBride sitting on a provisional pole. Chad Cole, Dwayne Vincent, 2-3. A lot of fast guys. Very quick, before we go down to our tra track uh, you know, opening ceremonies and the national anthem, uh, what are you expecting for tonight's race? You know, it's going to be interesting because a big field here in these, um, running at Phoenix, it could be really treacherous on the restarts. It could be, it's it's an interesting race. We're going to see some beating and banging. People are going to really lean on each other. Very easy to slide up here. And so it's a physical racetrack. And uh, these guys are going to have, have a, a heck of a time trying to keep their noses clean. So it should be a lot of fun to watch. So we're about to get ready to go green flag racing again at the Phoenix International Raceway. So on this Veterans Day night, we are going to go down trackside for the Cactus Cuties and our national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming Whose broad stripes and bright stars Through the perilous fight O'er the ramparts we watched Were so gallantly streaming Yeah. 
Being a great job by the Cactus Cuties once again with that national anthem and shout out to the virtual Thunderbirds as well. We are on the grid and it's going to be the number 15 of Rhett McBride taking pole position with a time of 26.825, almost picking up a tenth from his quickest lap in practice. Outside of row number one, it's going to be that eight of Chad Cole. Dwayne Vincent on the offense tonight, going to be starting in from the third position. Outside of him is the number 16 of Steve Ritter. Inside row number three, the fifth starting position, going to the 26 of Jose Gonzalez. Outside him, the number four Care Bears machine of CJ Laver. Starting seventh will be the number 20 of Mike Montesi. Alongside of him, the 31 of Jonathan Cadell. Take a look behind them, the number five of Bill Tomer in that subway car going to take to the grid position nine and rounding up the top ten to 91 of Steve Gottschalk. Kale Dressback in the number 45 will be starting from the 11th position alongside of him is the number 38 of Mark Bratcher. How about the 66 Brian Harvey starting lucky position number 13 and position 14 to his outside the 33 of David Lanza. Starting 15th will be the number 19 of Marvin Turnmeyer Jr. Starting 16th, the number 29 of Brennan Mercer. Position 17 is going to belong to the two of Ronnie Potts outside him, the 47 of Eric Arnold. Starting 19th will be the number 48, making a second start. That's Kevin Linden. Alongside him is the 88 of Adam Roberts. 65 of Ed Williams Jr. going to hit the grid. Position 21 and 22, the 43 of Doug Ross. Starting 23rd will be the number 18 of Barry Hines. Alongside him, the number 22, A.J. Browning. Position 25th on back, Mike King, Guy Snyder, Rich Jett, Douglas Wyatt, and John Wilco are going to round out our field as the field is on the racetrack, doubled up, and the lights are off at the top of the field with that Ford first racing Mustang pace car. So the front row of the 15 of Rhett McBride and the 8 of Chad Cole are going to get things underway tonight at the Phoenix International Raceway as we pace through turns 3 and 4. And the capacity crowd of 67,000 start to rise to their feet. Here they come down the front straight with the pace car going to dive to the safety of pit row at any moment right now and the field will be in the hands of the 15. There they go. Rhett McBride's going to wait on it. There he goes. The green flag is out and we're racing at Phoenix. Meanwhile, we're side by side for second. Yeah, racing quickly here at Phoenix is Chad Cole doing all he can to hold off that 13 of Vincent. Yeah, you can make that outside work at this racetrack even in three and four. However, uh, the advantage to the outside is mostly in turns one and two. Three and four, these guys are going to throw it down to the bottom. As you see, they work here right, uh, right near the yellow line. Some of these guys diamonding up the racetrack. But uh, turn three, you drive it in and you're rolling and decelerating all the way to the center of the corner. Turn one, a very different corner, uh, which is one of the challenges uh, that this racetrack will provide these guys. Uh, but right now, side by side for position number five, Jose Gonzalez in the 26, looking to get by the 16 of Steve Ritter. Ritter cleared him down the front stretch and almost overdrove it into the back bumper of LeVere going into one and ends up getting back in front of that 26 machine of Jose Gonzalez. So they're going to single file up for the time being. Uh, we really saw the run that those guys got on that top side off the corner that last time. Let's take a look side by side for 15th position going into one, the 19 of Marvin Turnmeyer Jr. trying to hold off the 29 of Brennan Mercer. Mercer trying to get something to work on the top side over the 19 is going to prevail on the inside in one and two and is going to pick up that spot now down the back stretch into three. Is going to clear by about one two car lengths and hang on to position number 15 after Mercer challenged on the top side. Other than that taking a look through the field everybody trying to single file themselves out and they have done so successfully and they're going to try to get a green flag run in as the 15 McBride opens up a three tenth of a second lead over now second place Chad Cole. Yeah second place Chad Cole that eight car uh, certainly at this point trying to run down Rhett McBride and I tell you what Rhett has been solid here uh, as we see actually the leader way high in three and four. Some of that is by design. I don't think he brought it back down to the bottom of the racetrack as quickly as he meant to. Uh, but this is a racetrack where, you know, your line matters. You know, you, you miss the line and it, it could be a really rough exit. However, you can approach the line a few different ways. Uh, and so some of these guys are going to be, especially turns one and two, are, are run very differently. Three and four basically comes down to how much are these guys going to dime in the corner where they slide up in the middle, come right back down to the bottom on exit. Turns one and two, though, however, very different. You can enter pretty high. You can enter low and carry speed, but it's going to hurt your exit. And so a lot of different, uh, a lot of different thought processes or, or theologies really uh, are going through. But Jack Cole, that eight car, creeping up on the 15 of McBride. Um, Red is looking for his first win of the year. Chad is looking for uh, not his first win, to say the least. 
and definitely we're side by side back in the pack now with several drivers the 22 of aj browning right now position 23 has just been passed by both the 18 of barry hines and the 04 of mike king and now the 36 of rich jet is going to come on and take advantage of that inside as well and move that 22 of browning after coming by the stripe last time position 23 all the way back to 26 and something not handling right with that 22 car he's stuck on that top side uh, not as bad at this track as some others almost gets clipped by the 65 of Ed Williams Jr. and uh, they're gonna get back in line and sort things out uh, but definitely not what he wanted to do all he did once was overdrive entering turn number three and next thing he knows three cars on that bottom freight trained him as he was trying to get the handle back on his race car it's deep in the pack but still a lot of racing to go again currently working on lap number eight for race leader Rhett McBride in the rest of the field of 125 laps so still a long way to go tonight that's one of those frustrating things about when you're in a competitive field, especially pretty recently after a start or a restart, is you make one little mistake and then you're you're stuck high and you, you have trouble really making it back. And uh, when AJ got stuck high, we saw him really trying to defend that spot, uh, but in doing so actually overshoot some of the corners and slide way up the hill. Hurts your right front tire, hurts your confidence a little bit as you fade a little bit backwards. And now he's uh, getting back into a rhythm, uh, which this racetrack is uh, very much a rhythm racetrack. I mean, every racetrack, I guess, is a, is a rhythm racetrack, but some of them you're really feeling out the car and there's more variables. This one uh, is uh, is almost a, a theory like slower is better. Uh, you want to back up the corner entry, roll, 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 roll all the way through the center and to get that exit quite uh, right. As, the, as we have contact entering turn number one, it's around the 43. The 04 was put in the wall. Now the 18 sliding down the racetrack, hooks Rich Jet. That's exit of turn two. The 18 is uh, is uh, upside down. The 04 involved, and it looks like it was going to be uh, they were going to avoid a caution, but then the wreck just broke out there, exiting turn number two. They jumbled them up in turn number one, and we're going to go under our first caution flag of the night, taking a look at the replay going into one on lap number ten. Looks like the 18 of Hines overdrove the corner a little bit, got the 43 car, uh, and put the 04 up into the outside fence. And the 18 car caught that outside wall, came sideways, just, just nicked Rich Jet, and was nailed by the 22 of Browning, who we were talking about not just too long ago. And that 18 car up and over on two wheels, a tough break. And that's just what happens. We've seen drivers on the green flag sliding up, sliding down, speeding up, back and forth on each other's bumper. It's a very driver-determined racetrack. Up front, new race leader, the 8 of Chad Cole, going to bring him down pit road. As that was happening, he made a move to the inside on the 15 of McBride in those last two laps and was able to pick up position number one. So then everybody on the lead lap pretty much is going to come down and hit the pit lane and make adjustments to their race cars. We're going to take a look at how this shakes out as some drivers about one or two are going to stay out on the racetrack for the time being but everybody else down to pit lane yeah pretty much everyone except it looks like cj lebert jose gonzalez guy snyder choose to stay out don't believe anyone else actually adam roberts as well uh so four on the racetrack everyone else on pit road getting four tires uh cole went to the lead and uh just uh just want to mention real quick rich jet who was heavily involved in that incident uh, doing very well in the chases. Rhett McBride is going to win the race off of Pit Road. Actually, retake the lead on Pit Road, uh, which is which is pretty big when your picker can get the job done and uh, give you the track position that you would like to have. Uh, but Rich Jet doing well in the points, so this is going to hurt. Um, he, you know, he's made a habit of uh, intentionally not qualifying or intentionally starting in the back by not qualifying. And uh, we've seen him come through the field and be solid. He's been very consistent. Unfortunately, when you're coming through the field, you're you're in a vulnerable spot. If someone makes a mistake, Rich Jet hooked head on into the wall. Uh, that's going to certainly hurt his point situation. Uh, as he was, uh, I think, uh, he mathematically could contend with like third or fourth in points. Uh, certainly wasn't going to win the championship this year. I think he was mathematically eliminated, but uh, that's rough for the 36 car. It's already two laps down. I think he has too much damage to continue. Yeah, definitely. As we keep our main focus, obviously, on that championship. It appears to be pretty much Chad Cole's championship to lose, but a three-man race overall. There's still guys battling throughout the points, trying to pick up a spot or two, you know, battling to get into the top ten. If you're a John Abbott entering tonight, you know, ten back from Ritter, who is tenth place, or you're a Jose Gonzalez, only three back from a Rich Jet in fifth, it's going to benefit him, obviously, from what we have seen so far in tonight's race. The field 
is already doubled up, working through three and four. How about Lavera telling me that he's going to go for the win, staying out, making an interesting call early on. We'll see how this works out. The Ford first racing Mustang pace car up top of the field is working its way off turn four and down to pit road. So CJ Lavera will dictate the start. He's on the loud pedal and the green flag back out at Phoenix here on lap 13, coming to lap 14, side by side for second place right now, going into one, the 26 of Gonzalez on the top of the 27, Snyder trying to hang on. Yeah, and Chad called the eight right behind Snyder, looking for a hole to put his car into, try to get through these cars with older tires. Uh, Dwayne Vincent had a good restart. Uh, Rhett McBride not so much so Cole able to clear Rhett McBride early on and these guys have to be careful here as the eight is right on Guy Snyder on the eggs of turn number four 26 of Gonzalez hits the wall Vincent's in the Ooh. middle here and the, uh, this is racing just uh, this is one of those things to deal with when people stay on old tires Three wide with a slow car on the high lane right around the top two in the championship as they try to negotiate that big checkup going into one now going down the back straightaway we're taking a look at the eight car of Chad Cole being shown position four right now in the third spot is in front of a side-by-side -side battle with Dwayne Vincent in a 26 car of Jose Gonzalez. Gonzalez got real loose through three and four that last lap got loose and then it caused a big checkup after making contact with the wall. Now Vince is going to get around him and look at Chad Cole right in front of him. Again, he's going for it, not laying back and not, certainly not on the defensive at all when you consider the points because he wants that second spot right now from the 27 of Guy Snyder the fourth. He's going to pick that up. Snyder going to battle back, can't get it done. And now Vincent going to throw it to the inside also down the front straightaway to try to pick up that spot as well. And then they're also side by side, not too far behind him as the 15 and 16 settle things out back there. Yeah, track position means a lot here, which is why you saw some of these guys in the top four stay out. Uh, but uh, with so many coming down pit road, uh, it's cause for alarm. Uh, some of these guys fading quickly. CJ Lavera has done a pretty good job. As a leader, you can jump out in front of these guys, and uh, but Cole in the eight has already pulled right up to the rear bumper of the of Lavera in the four, uh, as Lavera just desperately tries to hold on to the lead. Uh, certainly, the tire's still an advantage for those who did pit. Tires have not equalized yet. The eight's already underneath the four for the lead. And it's almost a risk versus reward. You take a look. CJ Lavera took to the grid position six. So it's an interesting move to try to pick up a couple of spots. You mentioned once those tires were out. If he was back in 20th, it'd be a really good move. I don't know, coming in, he's going for the win, though. Uh, he's hanging on a second for now, but Dwayne Vincent in the 13, Haviland Ford going into one. Going to stick that nose right there to that inside line. And now side by side for second, coming off a of turn number two. I do believe Vincent will easily prevail in this side by side battle once we get down here into the corner. Uh, so move Dwayne Vincent right there back up into the second position. So right now, just as we finished last week, the top three on the racetrack are the top three in the championship standings. So when they told these guys that they got to step it up in the chase, uh, they're definitely listening because those top three guys are strong week in and week out. And a caution flag flies. Yeah, it looks like the 19 of Turnmire it has been turned on his roof. No pun in originally intended, but hey, that works. But it looks like it was a solo spin out of turn number four. I don't think anyone else got involved. Um, these guys did a good job of avoiding him. Tough luck for Termeyer. He has brought his car behind the wall, called it a night. Uh, the 19 just got loose out of turn number four on the apron and hooked into the inside wall. And the wall just grabbed him and spit him out like a used piece of gum. And so that 19 car heavily damaged. That's one thing you got to be careful there coming off four. If we take a look at the replay, uh, his left side tires were below that checkered white or dashed white line, uh, which kind of signifies the apron, I guess you could say, or the entry uh, down to the pit lane down there. Right below that dashed white line, the ground is flat. There's no banking, so he has the left side on a flat and the right side still up on that banking in the corner. And it sent that car right around again. The 19 of Turnmeyer gets turned over, uh, intentional or not, that was pretty good, I see what you did there. Um, but evidently the field under caution again for our second caution flag of the night so far. We're going to go to a quick commercial break, when we come back we're going to be looking for the green flag again, you're watching ETV Motorsports Live's live coverage of the 2013 Real Sim Racing Full Throttle Cup Series.
Inside SimRacing.tv, the fastest show on the internet. Sim racing news and reviews since 2007, with new shows every week. Taking a look at the replay as we're back at the Phoenix International Raceway, some games being played on pit road as Dwayne Vincent jumping out to avoid coming down pit lane as some of the other leaders do. Some other guys jumping out, including the 15 of Rhett McBride. Everybody else down the pit lane under that caution flag to get their cars touched up with some fresh Goodyears and maybe topped off on fuel, which now sets up our front row to be the 8 of Chad Cole and the 13 of Dwayne Vincent as the field again doubled up side by side. Lights are off on the Ford First Racing Mustang pace car, so we're going to be looking to come back to the green as we take lap 25 of 125. Again, watching ETV Motorsports Live's live coverage of the 2013 Real Sim Racing Full Throttle Cup Series, the penultimate race tonight, Phoenix, and then we finish off the season next week at Homestead. Coming off of four, looking for the green. Yeah, and much like the last restart, top four stayed out. Everyone else came down pit road, took four tires. Chad Cole in control. The restart goes early. Gonzalez in the 26, able to follow him on through. Vincent back up to third here uh, as they try to hold on to their track position with older tires. Red McBride in the 15, right behind Vincent above Lavare. Has new tires like Lavare. And uh, the pole center of this race trying to get it done and keep himself in the, in the play for the win. Dwayne Vincent muscled his way around Jose Gonzalez. Gonzalez and Chad Cole teammates, so communicating on that restart. Dwayne Vincent not so conveniently left out of the loop on that side by side behind in the 16 of Steve Ritter having the advantage over the 15 machine of Brett McBride going into one. Going to get that spot now. The 27 of Guy Snyder actually going to the inside of the 15 has the run coming at it too. Looks like he'll get it when we go into three and four. Not quite clear, and now he will clear them as they throw it into the corner. And now we're gonna go side by side again as the 26 of Gonzalez is not looking, or does not have the speed that he's looking for. He's gonna lose a spot to Lavare and causes the 16 of Ritter to check up. So the 26, Jose Gonzalez, not having the speed right now on those old tires, trying to battle and hang on to his spot right now, P4. Yeah, and right on Ritter's bumper, uh, right behind Gonzalez is that 27 of Guy Snyder. Now he's one of the guys who stayed out on the first caution 10 laps into the race and he's one of the drivers where the strategy really worked out for. Uh, he, he qualified, he started from the back, started 26th and uh, now 6th with the tie, with the same tires as everyone around him aside from the couple that stayed out. So Guy Snyder, uh, the winner at Martinsville just a couple of weeks ago here looking strong here in 6th. And definitely the battle picking up right now for the second spot, the four car of CJ LaVeyer right now, but a car length off the back bumper of that Havilene Ford of Dwayne Vincent. Again, Chad Cole, 10 wins this season. Dwayne Vincent, 13. If you take a look at that, that's 26 of 34 races that we have ran have been won by these guys. One guy that has not picked up his win yet is that four of C.J. LaVare still searching for that elusive first victory with 11 top fives but has not been able to finish the race P1 yet this season. But we definitely see him up there in the top five, top ten, maybe even top three week in and week out. But he only has two races left to do it and he definitely does not want to finish 2013 winless. So he's looking to pick that up tonight at the Phoenix International Raceway. Yeah, and we, we saw him race seemingly a little more aggressive last week at Texas than he usually does. He's looking pretty aggressive here. Uh, he looks low on Dwayne entering turn one just a couple laps ago. Still looking a little bit low, but not committed to the bottom underneath him there. Just not quite there. Uh, but the four of LeVaire, that's something where where it could be frustrating as a driver uh, because you have 11 top fives at, uh, during the year. That's uh, pretty much a 33% ratio there uh, or um, percentage. But 
uh, it can be frustrating because you know you can run up front in these races, you just haven't broken through. A lot of times you could, uh, it's similar to the way Dale Earnhardt Jr. looks this year, where he's finished second a bunch of times, I believe five second place finishes, but just hasn't broken through to victory lane. And uh, that's something that could drive you crazy as a driver because you're you're thinking to yourself, when is this going to even out? When am I going to get my shot? And definitely he continues to apply the pressure on the back bumper of Dwayne Vincent. The battle for second continuing on, however, really not in any sort of challenging position or at this moment, but a car length off the back bumper of Vincent. So he's just letting him know that he is there. And if Vincent is to mess up and make a mistake, that he is definitely going to capitalize on that mistake and try to get around him right away. 24 cars remain on the lead lap of 29 that started this thing. Douglas White in the 12 machine with a Gravedigger design is the last car on the lead lap at the moment. Taking a look, the field starting to bunch up now behind our third place car. They had a little bit of a break uh, from LeBaron back, however, Steve Ritter in the fourth place, nine tenths off a race leader. Only about a couple car lengths off the back bumper of the four of LeVere, so it looks like that the more LeVere battles with Vincent, these guys behind them start to chip away and try to get themselves into that picture as well. Or that last time by Steve Ritter gained about, uh, you could say about maybe a hundredth of a second, so not really a lot, but the 16 and the 27 of Snyder behind him, they're going to definitely be challenging here. Yeah, certainly hard racing or even or especially side by side racing is slower. And so people who are able to run, use as much racetrack as they would like around the entire track are able to capitalize on that and get closer. Uh, Dwayne is feeling a lot of pressure from that four car Lavert. Uh, and uh, I don't know if you could say intimidated with the Care Bear scheme on it, uh, but Lavert has got him to uh, drive really hard into turn, turns one and three on multiple occasions here. When someone's looking, you're just trying to hold them off and you're maybe entering the corner a little harder than you want to. Uh, and sometimes that can slow you down as well. So anytime you're changing your line for a competitor around you, everyone else uh, just reaps the benefits from it. And definitely a good point there, that four machine, that not really the most intimidating look in your rear view mirror. However, you look in the cockpit, you see there, it's gonna amp the amp, up the amp, you could say, uh, right now. Again, everybody single file out, real no battles on the racetrack. We have a bunch of cars real close. Uh, let's take a look at 10th place right now, the 88 of Adam Roberts sitting in that 10th position, qualified 20th, so he's picked up 10 spots already to this point in the race on the back bumper of another sharp looking ride, the 66 car of Brian Harvey. Harvey actually just got around Adam for that 10th position. So these guys real stacked up as well. And then we could see an incident like we saw earlier on in the race where all you gotta do is make one mistake, overdrive corner entry, and three guys could get by you. And that also applies to Dwayne Vincent and LaVere that we were checking on earlier as Steve Ritter continues to close in on them at like the front of the pack. Yeah, and Steve Ritter is a driver looking for his fourth victory. Uh, certainly a lot more close quarters racing in the middle of the pack. They're spreading out a little bit out front. Um, and you mentioned Adam Roberts. Roberts right now in the 88, getting passed by the 20 of Mike Montesi. So Montesi, uh, well, that will put him up to 11th. He actually qualified 7th, good qualifying run. Lost a couple spots, making a couple spots back right now. Uh, the 88 of Roberts looking solid so far. Uh, as you mentioned, he started uh, 20th. And uh, that's a driver we haven't seen in the Full Throttle Cup Series for a number of weeks, if my memory serves me correctly. It's been a little while. Uh, and so he's come right back into this series and uh, doing a good job so far. Uh, but right now, the 91 of God's Chalk, uh, we've mentioned his Lenny, Lenny Pond scheme from 1976, that Pepsi machine retro looking. And uh, right now, he's applying the pressure to Roberts. And so uh, this is one of those things you fall out of your rhythm a little bit, you make a mistake or two, and uh, and then you're just looking in your rearview mirror for quite a while until you can get that rhythm back. In a track like Phoenix International Raceway, not really a short track, a mile in length. Known for some green flag racing, however cautions do breed caution, so if we see a late race caution, that could really be the curveball in tonight's race, but I do expect us to see some long green flag runs like we're taking a look at right now, just because of the nature of the track, very line and driver orientated. Um, there's really no, there's no one set way to get around this place, the driver can really modify it, they'll be uh, they'll be messing with the throttle, jerking that wheel, trying to get that car to turn and pick up tents every lap. Uh, back to the back to the subject about losing three spots at once. You you mentioned earlier in the race that you really want to get it on the restart because we can run here under the green flag and you can spend 25 laps 
running solid laps and pick up those three spots and lose them that quickly and that's why it's so important as a driver you really need to maintain a fluent consistent groove you could say stay in that rhythm hit your marks and do it lap in and lap out and that's not easy at a long race like 20, 125 laps at phoenix especially when you have guys on your back bumper and you know that the championship could be decided tonight depending on how the outcome is yeah that's one of those things that could drive you crazy as a driver and uh you know, it's especially happening on restarts too, where everyone's all bunched up. If you have to lift for a driver in front of you, just being pretty, uh, pretty courteous or, or going a little easy, and it's one of those things where the guy behind you might not be so courteous. He shoots it underneath you. There's three behind him. Then you're stuck high. The good thing about this track is that you have the opportunity to clear him in one and two, and even in three and four as well. We've seen a few drivers clear others in three and four. However, much harder to do is there's a lot of grip right on that yellow line. Uh, however, that's the thing that will drive you crazy, and it's the thing that guys like Dwayne Vincent and Chad Cole, if they're up there in the championship battle, really look for. Uh, they don't want those situations to happen, because as you mentioned, uh, you get passed by three cars and you spend the next 20 laps passing each one back, and it's at a much slower rate. And so you want to get all that. As the 88's way high in three and four, going to keep it off the wall barely. Now that puts the five of Bill Tomer underneath him. Uh, no harm, no foul. And the 88's going to clear Tomer as they head into turn number one. Uh, but just such a rhythm racetrack. One little slip and it'll send you straight up the hill just like that. Side by side behind them, the 47 of Eric Arnold. Position 16 is going to get around the number 33 car of David Lanza to pick up P15. Those guys were side by side for a little bit. The 33 of Lanza, take a look to the inside. is going to check up as he saw the 47 possibly coming down the racetrack. So he's going to get that spot. I don't think the 33 is going to give up, though. He's going to throw it down there into turn number one, trying to search for that grip. The 47 of Eric Arnold on the top lane in that Navy Nuke Ford Fusion is going to be able to hang on and will secure that spot over the 33 for now. And now the 38 of Bratcher wants a spot from the 33 machine of Lanza as well, going into the corner. He's going to get a spot as the 33 messes around on the back bumper of Arnold in front of them. And now they're going to be side by side down the front straightaway. Yeah, Mark Bratcher capitalized on that when uh, Lanza exited turn number two on the bottom. It didn't have the momentum down the backstretch. Now Bratcher trying to take advantage of that. And uh, Ronnie, Ronnie Potts joining this battle as well in the two. As we ride on board with Ronnie Potts looking at these cars, it's Mark Bratcher right in front of him. As Ronnie gets really loose, see him counter steering to bring that car back to him. Uh, now he's lost momentum there and the 48 of Kevin Linden is going to look below him who's behind him. Uh, not quite there yet and uh, the 48 backs out while Ronnie drives way deep into turn number one, protecting that position as uh, Lanza in front of him works the bottom as Mark Bratcher tries to uh, gain an advantage. Uh, but as we see the 88 of, uh, of Adam Roberts joining this battle as well, as Adam's just been fading a little bit this run and getting really loose. As you see, he's trying everything to get some speed into that car right there, bunched everybody up, a lot of contact. Bratcher was sideways, Adam Roberts is in the wall, Lanza trying to avoid, uh, Lanza getting all sideways down the front stretch after avoiding, and so this is a mess back here right now. 38 car trying to hold on, look at that run by that two of Ronnie Potts, all the way up to the back bumper of Bratcher, that time through one and two, he's going to have to back off as he was side by side because the 88 of Adam Roberts is on his top side. These guys all in this area have been side by side for quite a while. Now side by side in front of them is a big whittle by the 47 of Eric Arnold nearly goes into the fence. The two of Ronnie Potts with an aggressive move to the inside. They all hang on for now but the anticipation and the action picking up as this group of race cars have been going at it for the last few laps. Another big wiggle as the 47 nearly chops off the 48 machine of Kevin Linden and now the 88 of Roberts going to go around as well. So there's another example of that where Eric Arnold battled this group for several laps, got up, and then once he overdrove one corner, he finds himself all the way back, and he continues to wiggle now as he sits in the 19th spot. Yeah, I'm starting to wonder if possibly something doesn't feel right in his steering wheel with a car. As the 88 gets way sideways in front of him, saves it. Arnold moves to the outside. Brennan Mercer's going to follow him. And uh, that time, they weren't passing him low, but that's one mistake. Leads to uh, leads to a bunch of lost spots as Roberts overdrives turn three, slides way up the hill. 43 of Doug Roth is going to sneak on by. That's going to put Doug Roth in, I believe, the 17th position. We're about to find out as the scoring updates. Arnold sideways again down the front stretch. One of the things that could be a factor here is if it's not maybe a steering wheel related thing, 
is when you get the right rear tire hot, uh, it, you can't even touch it. Uh, it'll just spin the tires, uh, any, or you can't even touch the throttle, it'll just spin the tires all the way down the straightaway, seemingly. And so that might be one of those things that Arnold had happened, was uh, just overstretch that right rear tire a little bit, and then you pretty much have to wait on the throttle a lot. Uh, that 47 car doesn't look right right now, uh, but has maintained control enough to uh, stay in this race. He's got some front end damage, but I, uh, which might be affecting the way his car's handling as well. Got the big wiggle by the 88 of Adam Roberts again. You talked about the 47 of Eric Arnold and the Navy nuke, that uh, U.S. Navy Ford Fusion again tonight. Uh, Monday, November the 11th, obviously Veterans Day. Several drivers having a little bit of a special paint scheme. One in particular, if we can take a look at the 38 machine of Mark Bratcher sitting in position number 15 as he works his way around the racetrack with a blue and red paint scheme number 38 with Veterans Day on the hood of it and a thank you on the side with an American flag. So some drivers sporting a little bit different paint schemes. Talk about different paint schemes. The four season Laver, a little bit different, but definitely several drivers uh, supporting a good cause out here tonight at the racetrack. Yeah, uh, that's actually Mark Bratcher's paint scheme. I didn't catch a nice uh, Veterans Day scheme with thank you above the rear tires. And you mentioned Laver in the four. I believe that Care Bear uh, came, uh, a nickname that came from Stephen Herring actually. Uh, who threw down another great entertaining drivers meeting today. Uh, it seems like a lot of nicknames are going around here. As the battle up front, Lever not putting the pressure on Vincent as much as he was earlier, and Cole not being not feeling any kind of pressure at all. Chad Cole, our point, points leader with a 27 point lead, has put a second on the field as uh, Dwayne Vincent's about 11 tenths, 1.1 seconds behind the leader right now. Steve Ritter's been hanging with these guys. Ritter actually staying with LeVert, trying to get closer and closer uh, through the track right here, actually losing another tenth. It seems like Chad Cole, um, as these tires have worn, and we're even getting close to halfway within about seven or eight laps, uh, Cole has a good feel uh, for how these things feel on older tires. And definitely the green flag run obviously benefiting him rather in his 8 machine as his lead right now over the 13 of Dwayne Vincent grows to about 1.1 seconds and picks up a little bit more that last time by. We have to obviously keep the championship in mind. We've seen Dwayne Vincent lead the points. We've seen, we've seen shifts of 30 or more points in the championship uh, in previous races throughout the season. But it seems last week when Cole got the lead taking home the victory tonight sitting p1 at the eight is definitely picking it up when it when he needs to as the 47 machine of eric arnold who we were documenting his troubles not too long ago comes down pit lane makes the green flag stop we'll lose a lap but puts four fresh tires on that machine currently being shown on the racetrack in 24 spot yeah he might have had a problem that he wanted to rectify or just was uh, really tired of the tires that he had and thought maybe short pitting could work out as this race does have a green flag look to it and uh, these guys have remained green for quite a while. Looks like we're going to remain green as these guys uh, have sorted out a, a, lot of, um, a lot of space between half of the field. Some of the other half are uh, all close. It seems like when you're, when you're making ground back up, it's just uh, the rate as we see the, eight, the, um, the 38 of Mark Bratcher uh, is being challenged by the 48 of Kevin Linden. Uh, when you're coming from the back, it's just really easy uh, to race really hard and get caught racing people as uh, it, a lot of people want to move forward. And it tends to be more aggressive than out front uh, in the early stages of a race as the leaders out front kind of want to get single file and stretch their legs a little bit and get away from the rest of the field. Uh, but the field overall starting to spread out in a big way and uh, which lends itself to green flag racing, where this could work out for that 47 of Eric Arnold for bringing it down pit road early. And definitely, you gotta take a look at the drivers on the racetrack. Again, 23 on the lead lap right now. Last car on the lead lap remains that 12 of Douglas Wyatt, who has not had the speed that he has wanted. Uh, we've seen him back there pretty much all race long after qualifying, actually not taking a time, but hitting the grid 28th spot. Continues to ride around at the back of the pack in his number 12 Gravedigger Chevrolet. 21 seconds back of race leader. The race leader is running lap times in the low 28 second range, so he has a little bit of time until he starts to lose laps. Uh, but once uh, we see race leader Chad Cole start to close in, is now it's a 22 second gap 
uh, behind him, which makes it about six seconds in front of him, then we're going to see a lot of drivers start to lose their laps. If this green flag racing continues, drivers such as Wilco, Roberts, Williams, Jr., Brent, Mercer, Roth, Linden, all these drivers uh, 15 to 20 seconds back of the race leaders, not running much lap slower. you got to take a look. Douglas White's last lap, last car to lead lap was a 28.61. Chad Cole, a 28.061. Uh, so just a little bit quicker, uh, but that can mean a lot at a shorter track, obviously like Phoenix, and it's showing what cars are dominant early as those top three continue to battle. The closest ones you could say on the racetrack right now uh, in a high position is the four of CJ LeVert, who has company, is the 16 of Steve Ritter right now, sitting about two, three seconds off of them as they work to take lap number 65. Yeah, Lovera, as this race has gone uh, gone on, has uh, lost his pace with leader uh, Chad Cole, and I don't think Ritter has fallen off quite as much as Lovera has. And so Ritter trying to put some pressure on that four of Lovera and get closer there uh, to make a move is uh, two very different lines, and you see that a lot. Uh, where this track, you can really approach the corners in different ways. Uh, Lover seems to be diamonding uh, three and four a lot higher than Steve Ritter is. Turn one, you see these guys entering pretty high, bringing it to the bottom. Some of these guys keeping their cars in the middle of the racetrack. You gotta wait till pretty far close to the exit uh, to get full throttle with these things. And uh, all these are factors in how these uh, tires will wear and how well you will keep up during a run. Uh, the key thing to do. And uh, this might seem like pretty simplistic advice, but the key to keeping tires, or especially the front tires in your car, is don't turn the wheel. That's the simple way of putting it. You turn, you turn left a little bit too much, you're, you're using that right front tire. So the less you turn, the better your car's gonna feel on old tires. And that's why Chad Cole right now has a 1.3 second lead on Dwayne Vincent, and three seconds on third place. As Lever, the four car, catches the apron, goes up the track, that's going, to be, uh, that's going to be the opportunity for the 16 of Ritter to get underneath him, uh, but not quite there on exit, as Lever is able to, to defend that spot. He really got in there going into turn number three, and I was just going to mention, you talked about the tires. That is pretty much the main thing that Lever stressed to me when we talked before the race, was he wants to keep all four tires under that race car, but it's looking like it's starting to get real loose. And the 16 of Steve Ritter taking his time, trying to pick up that position as the four slides up the hill there, coming off turn four. And a 16 of Ritter gets a huge run on that bottom. So we're going to be side by side for third. The four of CJ LeVere is going to wave him on by. So move Ritter into that third position for the first time tonight after a predominantly Cole Vincent LeVere dominated race as CJ Lovera's car at number four is not liking this green flag run as the tires continue to wear as the laps take through, now back to fourth. And something that can compound that, uh, that, can compound that problem is when someone puts pressure on you. Uh, and once Ritter came closer and closer to uh, taking that third position, uh, CJ was trying to uh, defend it, uh, was trying to change his line a bit to uh, pick up some speed to try to distance himself from that fourth place car, or at the time fourth place car. And so he started overdriving it, and uh, when they switched uh, spots right there, uh, Lovera actually overdrove turn three, slid up the track, and once they were side by side, CJ uh, acquiesced the position, said, Steve Ritter, you can go on low and lift it before turn one. Uh, no sense in racing hard and losing even more time. And so Lovera uh, currently back to fourth, and some of these guys are coming down pit road, I believe. Uh, I heard some chatter. I thought that I heard that. I, I think I misheard actually is the car that I'm thinking about has stayed out on the racetrack. Uh, but these guys actually can go pretty far on a fuel tank. I think it's a still have a one a one stop race uh, to contend with though. Uh, but it's a second and a half advantage. Chad Cole back to Dwayne Vincent looking through the field for some side by side battles. Uh, these drivers pretty much spread out for the most part. However, Cole in front of Cole right now, he's coming up on some more lap traffic. That's Adam Roberts and Douglas Wyatt, as well as Mike King. So uh, Mike King's t two laps down in 24th. Douglas Wyatt currently 20th. Adam Roberts in 21st. And definitely, again, 125 laps as we go on board with Chad Cole, race leader, taking a look at that lap traffic up in front of him. 125 laps at a racetrack that is pretty much exactly one mile in length. 125 laps is 125 miles. We are on the downhill side of things, however. We passed the halfway point not too long ago, about 10 laps ago. 
So as we continue to work under the green flag, we will give you a full field rundown to let you know where everybody is running right now on the racetrack. So legally look at the top 10. The 8 of Chad Cole setting P1, Dwayne Vincent in the second position. Steve Ritter again just getting around CJ Lavare now sitting in third and CJ Lavare in the four is now in fourth. And 31 of Jonathan Cadell moving back to the fifth position. Sixth place the 26 of Jose Gonzalez. The 27 of Guy Snyder the fourth sitting P7. Eighth place belongs to the 66 of Brian Harvey. Mike Montesi in the 20 machine is ninth and tenth place is the 91 of Steve Goschuk. Right now, Rhett McBride, our pole sitter, running in 11th in a pretty pretty big battle there from about 8th on back. Uh, 12th is the number 45 of Dressback. Uh, we have Bill Tomer currently sitting in 12th. Ronnie Potts in 13th. I believe we have a car down pit road. Didn't catch who it was. Guy Snyder, it's actually Snyder coming down pit road, pitting a little bit early. Uh, wants to take advantage of four fresh tires, get all the time that he can. So he's the driver fitting through the field, going to rejoin the track. Uh, and uh, he's going to rejoin the track about a lap down around 21st. Guy Snyder making an interesting move. Only two tires coming down the pit lane. And now you're taking a look at the forward of CJ Lavare coming down from that fourth spot. As soon as he saw that the green flag pit cycle was starting to go through, he came down because he needed it bad as he began to slide back from where he was. Let's see if he takes four tires. This time into the pit lane, the right side going to go up on that Chevrolet. Two tires on the right side, they're going to run over to the left, and it will be a four-tire stop for C.J. LeVere, as opposed to a two-tire stop for what we saw from Guy Snyder. Yeah, looking at Guy Snyder's, uh, just looking back in the... Uh... Sometimes when you have to take, uh, when you have to fully fill that tank, you want to take four tires uh, just because, hey, you know, waiting another two seconds for a little more grip doesn't hurt. The 27 of Snyder right now, pretty loose in the center of the corner with two tires, and uh, that's where it becomes a little bit risky with strategy is you're going to gain time by not sitting on pit road as long. However, uh, there are still about 48 laps to go, and so uh, my memory serves, yeah, 48 laps to go. And so uh, he's got quite a while to go on these tires where if it doesn't handle exactly how he likes, it could be a very long run for him as he is just sideways through three and four. And uh, anytime your car is not pointed straight, you are losing speed. And uh, of course, hurting those rear tires as well. And definitely, so as we continue to work our way through the green flag pit stop, 16 cars remain on the lead lap, last car on the lead lap, the 29 of Brennan Mercer just made another two tire stop. So an interesting strategy call by some of these drivers. There's still a lot of laps to go. So that's gonna be a tough on those left side tires. So it's gonna be interesting to see if that will really prevail for the seconds that they save on pit lane. Will they be able to hold those off from the guys that will take four tires on the racetrack with so many laps to go again currently working lap number 80 of 125 so this time by the stripe it's going to be 45 laps to go can they do it and when will race leader chad cole come down pit road as Dwayne vincent still sitting in that second position as they start to continue to go down the pit lane as green flag pit stops cycle through right now the 15 Rhett mcbride is going to come down the pit lane as well from position number eight yeah and our, our top two on the track chad cole and Dwayne vincent sort of look at this from a different perspective. A uh, Cole with that 27 point lead is probably gonna stay out as long as possible to protect that position. Uh, now, if a caution were, or excuse me, uh, he's gonna stay out as long as he can to protect that position. However, if Dwayne Vincent comes down pit road, at that point, he might think, okay, this is who I'm racing, this is who I have to worry about, I might as well pit now rather than lose time to that 13 car. Of course, uh, if a caution comes out, they could get trapped a lap down. Uh, that's what you want to avoid. So Cole, will, uh, in, my guess is that Cole will not be the first car to come lap down, or excuse me, come down pit road. Dwayne Vincent, however, uh, wants to do the opposite of Chad Cole, so he might try to short pit himself uh, unless Cole comes to pit road shortly, at which point Dwayne Vincent's uh, best chance for uh, gaining some points would be to stay out as long as he can and hope for a caution. Cole Sitter coming down the pit lane laps, a couple laps ago, the 15 of Rhett McBride taking a four tire stop. So varying strategy calls on the pit lane as we work under the green flag condition and green flag pit stops continue to cycle through several drivers taking two but it looks like the front runners for the most part opting to go with four tires 
with, again, still a lot of laps to go. It's not like we're coming down with 10 to go and they need those seconds. An interesting strategy call for some of those guys. We were talking about Snyder in the 27. We saw how he is loose in the center of the corner, continuing to wiggle or on. He is he's sitting in position 16. He continues to wiggle on corner exit because he has really old left side tires. So again, it's going to come down to how everything shakes out. And if we see a caution in the middle of green flag pit stop, several guys are going to go lap down and have to take the wave and could really shuffle the field. And I think that's another reason why you might see Dwayne Vincent trying to stay out longer as much as he can. And Chad Cole trying to stay out up front as much as he can, lead as many laps as possible as he has pretty much locked up the most laps led at this point in the race as we've seen him out front pretty much since the get-go after he made quick work of the 15 of Brett McBride a couple laps into this thing. And that's one of those things you could definitely take advantage of when you have a big lead uh, deep into a run is uh, Chad Cole has that time to lose where, where he can afford to stay out a little longer than some of the other guys because they have ground to make up in the first place. And certainly whenever he comes down pit road, his tires will be so much newer that he'll be able to uh, fly up past uh, whoever was able to take that position from him, if anybody at all. And so right now we only have uh, 11 cars on the lead lap. Is it sort of a, a mixed batch of uh, strategies here? People deciding uh, when to come in and really thinking that this race is going to go green all the way. Otherwise, uh, otherwise it'll really set you back. Um, so it's about half and half right now out of cars who have pitted and have stayed out. Among those who have stayed out include some of the guys who were fading uh, back a little bit or maybe looking to take advantage of that strategy to hopefully get a little track position should a caution come out. And so some of these guys like Mark Bratcher, Ronnie Potts, uh, who were racing really hard uh, in the back half of the top 20, uh, might be looking for that caution to give them the track position. And then once uh, a bunch of cars take the wave around, all the drivers still on the lead lap will be able to have fresher tires and restart ahead of them. And so that's one of those things that these drivers are thinking of right now as they stay out as long as they can. Again, flag to flag coverage here on ETV Motorsports Live, brought to you by many people. Let's take a moment to talk about Inside Sim Racing, sponsoring the Thursday Night Real Sim Racing Asphalt Assault Series. Inside Sim Racing, your first and best choice for all the news and reviews in online motorsports. Join Darren Ganji and Sean Cole for the latest and greatest in product reviews, simulation auto racing games for PCs and the Xbox crowd. From steering wheels to full-size racing rigs, updates on popular racing games, and a whole lot more, the yellow pages of online auto racing. Inside Sim Racing has it all. Visit them today, www.isrtv.com and ileagrace.com, a one-stop shop for iRacing leagues. Looking for total website and points management, custom scoring protocols, complete scheduling and management of series and events, even a blog setup so you can recap your race, Ily Grace also provides driver and team signups with integration of APIs such as scoring tickers and points updates. If you have an iRacing league, you need iLeague Race. Uh, www.ileagrace.com. I know that Real Sim Racing uses that on their website as well, so a great deal over there. And trouble entering turn three. The two car just got sent around by the 26 of Gonzalez. I believe that was a case of Gonzalez was on the fresher tires, Ronnie Potts was on the older tires. And so Ronnie had to get out of the gas entering turn three a lot earlier than Jose uh, expected. And as they were racing pretty hard for a position, the 26 sent the two around. The 26 of Gonzalez taking credit for the caution will get an uh, analog sign penalty. Uh, it's a tough break for Ronnie as uh, he is, uh, I believe, seventh or eighth in points in that chase battle. Uh, been consistent for a lot of this year, last two weeks, though, not going the way he intended. Uh, however, if there's any uh, silver lining, in the wreck that Ronnie just had is that I think it's mostly just cosmetic damage. Don't think it messed up his rear end uh, or front end. And by rear end, I mean the rear end housing. Uh, certainly a lot of that, uh, the uh, paneling on the rear end of the car actually completely gone right now. And definitely in one person that's really going to get the short end of the straw on this deal is CJ Lavere, who already made his pit stall sit in P12. All those guys a lap down have already pitted, so they're going to take a wave around but their tires are going to be older than these guys and they're going to have track position that is not as great. So not what they wanted for sure. Here we go down the pit lane. All the leaders coming in. Can Dwayne Vincent make something work here and beat Chad Cole off of pit road and try to pick up a spot? We're going to find out. They're going to be side by side as they get into their pit stall. You see all those cars that have already pitted working their way around. But here we go through turn one and let's see how they make their pit stops. One or two tires up front. 
Yeah, and you want to come in to your pit stop out as aggressively as you can. And in fact, uh, Dwayne and Chad both came in about together. Uh, looks like they're gonna leave together. Chad Cole, judging by these pit stops, they're gonna they're gonna leave how they came in. Chad Cole's gonna retain that lead. Uh, don't believe any. Uh, Steve Ritter's gonna come out in third, and uh, Jonathan Cadell up there in fourth has been solid all race. Looking at the cars in front of them, checking to see if anyone possibly stayed out uh, to trap a bunch of people a lap down, but that did not happen here. All the cars in front of them are wave around cars, uh, I do believe. And some of these guys actually looking to pit up there. The 88 of Roberts coming down, even though he was in a wave around position. But I think at this point, uh, he just wants a set of tires pretty badly. And uh, so Chad Cole's going to be the leader when we restart. And as you mentioned, all those wave around cars not able to pit. And the people who are really going to suffer from that are probably the guys who took two tires. As they're going to be right with uh, all the guys who took four. This caution is going to even those tires out a little bit. Temperatures... Uh, coming down uh, to even things out. However, that's going to be a struggle for these guys on the same left sides that they had 60, 70 laps ago. And definitely a good point there with those two tires. You're going to be in this frenzy of but with four tires with you. But now that you're all grouped back up, it's going to be interesting to see how this really is negotiated. But again, CJ Lever is now sitting in 11th position, 30 points out of it. Um, if the race were to end the way they run right now, he'd be about 41 points out, and that would mathematically eliminate him as we have yet to see a 43-car field uh, to a race here in these late races with the chase with the uh, Wilson Racing Full Throttle Cup Series. But he's going to have to make some aggressive moves in his number fours. He waits for the wave round, actually. They're going to get this time by as the lights go off on the pace car. So Ken Laver go to damage control mode after I talked about it if we see a caution flying in the middle of green flag pit stops what will happen to those drivers and uh, we're gonna find out as we are on a downhill slope of things uh, we're gonna be coming to the green flag if we do not delay it as the, um, the lap cars continue to go around we're gonna go green with 30 to go so it'll be interesting to see the anticipation and the intensity really pick up on these late race restarts and what will happen with race leaders Cole and Vincent yeah, as our lead lap cars start to double up and the wave around cars make their way around the track to catch up. C.G. Lever, basically he's hoping for a caution at some point so that he can get fresh tires uh, because it's going to be difficult for him to make up any ground at this point. When the tires even out, he'll be able to get some spots, but not as many as uh, he probably could with even tires. But these guys are coming out of four. Actually, the, the caution has been extended. Uh, I believe one of the reasons why is uh, a couple people getting in along slime penalties uh, uh, one out of choice, another out of uh, the penalty for the caution. So they're sorting out this order. They don't want to give anyone a needless, or they don't want the game to give anyone a needless black flag that needs to be cleared during the green. And so as the order is uh, set straight, we should be going green next time by without fail as these cars right now exiting turn number two. And let's talk right now, before we get back to the green flag, about the ETV Entertainment Network, the industry experts in simulation racing broadcasting, has recently completed a rebranding exercise that will take online motorsports to a new level, combining real with virtual. Together with the HD Radio Network and Double Clutch Engage, ETV Entertainment Network Media now features an all-new ETV Motorsports Live, which you're checking out right now, and also... ETV Motorsports Radio. To find out more about our exciting new concept, contact us at etv-entertainment.com. The field working through three and four, doubled up, no delay of the caution flag, looking like in sight. The Ford first racing Mustang pace cars down, and Chad Cole wasting no time on the loud pedal on the green flag. Back out at Phoenix, Dwayne Vincent looks like he's going to hang on to second, side by side for third. Yeah, Jonathan Cadell, who, uh, who is running a top 10 just about all race, trying to take advantage of this grouping up with the restart, trying to work his way around the 16 of Steve Ritter. Looks like he's going to do that as the 31 of Cadell drives deep into turn number three, makes it work, and uh, carries speed, enough speed in the center to defend that position. Ritter looking for a chance to dive uh, back underneath him, but uh, it's not there as Cadell. Jonathan Cadell up to position number three. A big group of cars. Let's take a look at the 43 of Doug Roth, the two of Ronnie Potts on the inside lane. He just got around him or actually protected his spot from Ronnie Potts. Contact behind him as the 27 of Snyder tried to look to the inside and got back into what's left of the back bumper, rather, on that two machine. 
as well as the field continues to try to sort themselves out after we just got off of the caution flag again grouping everybody up over it looks like Chad Cole right now still with the dominant race car opening up a three tenth of a second lead over that second place race car being Dwayne Vincent the battle continues for ninth though as the 27 of Snyder tries to look for an opening yeah Snyder has older tires however Ronnie's got some damage was able to repair some of that during the caution uh, but his damage certainly is affecting the speed of his race car as Snyder uh, looking low a little bit uh, giving him a break actually Ronnie drives deep into turn one uh, thinking that he had to and that Snyder would keep himself on him but uh and that causes the loss of momentum on exit. So the 27 car just looking uh, for a way around him. Uh, but these guys showing some respect around each other. Uh, certainly for now, uh, while patience is still somewhat there as they come around this time by with 25 laps to go. And something that these guys worry about is uh, a lot of times when you have a bunch of wave arounds, it seems like that caution is almost imminent. As actually some contacts in the middle of the pack, the 45 of Dressback just drove into the back of the 66 of Harvey. However, uh, looks like they came through there unscathed, didn't even wiggle a little bit of cosmetic damage between those two cars. Now the 15 of McBride working underneath the 45 of Dressback, and he's going to clear Dressback. So that's going to put McBride in uh, 13th position as uh, he's trying to make a, a comeback from uh, some of his lost, uh, lost track position. DJ Lavera making an aggressive move on the outside of the 88 machine, trying to get around him and pick up some more spots, trying to continue to move forward, knowing that he needs to pick up whatever spots that he can right now. Interesting enough, the car holding up is a lap car. The 88 of Adam Roberts is not on the lead lap, and Lavera battling with him has allowed the 66 of Brian Harvey to get to the back bumper of that four machine as well. So Lavera trying to negotiate some tricky and um, some lap traffic not a slow car because I do believe the 88 was a car that came down pit road as opposed to taking a wave around so not a lap down from damage or anything just from the way everything cycled through but he is not going to let that four car go because he has some pretty good speed of his own and wants to remain up there as that first car one lap down. And actually the 27 of Snyder uh, just sustained some damage on the left side of his car. Uh, about a lap ago he was trying to get underneath the two of Ronnie Potts I was actually caution on the racetrack. Uh, it's for the number five car that's Bill Tomer, uh, who's up against the wall. Uh, but Snyder basically spun his tires, hit the inside wall. No caution for that, but there is a caution for the five of Tomer, uh, who got turned by the 45 of Dressback. Yeah, if we can take a look at the replay there, that incident occurred going into turn number one. I'm going to take a look at the onboard here with Dresback. And Dresback had that wheel turned all the way to the left, just pushed up the hill a little bit and clipped that left rear of the five machine and they were side by side for about half a lap before that battling for a spot on the lead lap so definitely a, a strong battle of both drivers trying to hang on to where they were and protect their position uh, evidently ending with that five machine up and in that outside wall um, not really getting a lot of damage if any I think he pretty much kept it off before uh, maybe got a scratch uh, scratch some paint off that right rear but other than that that five machine should be fine uh, for the remainder of this race but that's going to put us under another caution flag we're going to go to a quick commercial break when we come back we'll be looking for a green flag run to the checkered flag you're watching etv motorsports lives live coverage of the 2013 real sim racing full throttle cup series presented by bob earl racing from phoenix
you're a serious online racing enthusiast, you need Derek Spear Design, maker of high quality, custom built, and 50 caliber strong simulation racing products like button boxes, shifter pedals, component parts, and more. The advantage a championship sim racing driver needs. Rated 10 out of 10 by Inside Sim Racing TV. Check out his line of top shelf sim racing products, reasonably priced at DerekSpearDesigns.com and buckle in for a no nonsense ride. DerekSpearDesigns.com today, cowboy. And welcome back to the Phoenix International Raceway. Thank you for tuning in to ETV Motorsports Live's continuing coverage of the 2013 Real Sim Racing Full Throttle Cup Series. Again, tonight is the penultimate race on the 2013 campaign because after this week, we go to the Homestead Miami Speedway to close things out and crown a champion. The wave around is going to go around the field. Lucky Dog, the 88 of Adam Roberts, getting his lap back. So will those four tires that he took under the last caution as opposed to getting a wave around help him we're gonna have to find out because the field begins to double up as the lights are off on the ford first racing mustang pace car and we'll be looking to go back green and there we are off chad cole gets the run and Dwayne vincent sitting second we're side by side for third right now with the 16 of ritter up top yeah this time the roles have reversed it's now cadell on the bottom ritter trying to take that third position on the top uh, however, uh, three and four, you can really roll the bottom, and Cadell's going to try to do just that, yawing that car out as uh, as they're still side by side for third. Vincent trying to make the run at Cole, not quite there yet. And Cadell actually, or excuse me, Cadell actually clearing Ritter out of turn number four, going to take, going to keep that third position. And so uh, now Steve Ritter's going to have to try uh, probably on the bottom as uh, Vincent in the 13 trying to make a run at the eight of Cole. Right now, about three car lengths between the two. Uh, but Chad Cole going really easy or really early on that restart, knowing uh, that there's only 15 laps to go as they cross the start finish line. This time, he wants to get this thing going, get some distance between everyone, and get this thing over with to give him a, a nice point lead going into the final race. But there's still 14 to go, or 15 to go. Side by side, back in the pack. The 27 of Guy Snyder, the fourth to the inside of the two car, pushes up the racetrack, almost gets into Ronnie Potts. They're going to hang on for now. They battle now up in front of them as the 20 of Mike Montesi trying to get around that 38 machine of Mark Bratcher as well. Going through turns three and four, the 20 is going to pick up that spot, so move him into the sixth position. But all eyes are up front. Can Chad Cole enter these last three races? He's 1-1. Will he make it two for two so far on the defense and do everything that he can to prevent Dwayne Vincent and to C.J. Lavare from making up points from him as Lavare sits back in the 12th position right now you mentioned 15 to go this time by the stripe it's going to be about 13 14 laps to go not a lot of time as they continue to shuffle behind them as the 91 of god shock now under attack from the 38 can dwayne vincent get this thing done it looks like cj lavare is around oh. on the front stretch uh looking for uh, what could uh, he's on his roof now that car is heavily damaged and this is certainly gonna take away any thoughts of him getting a decent finish tonight as uh, that car has already been taken behind the wall and it looks like it was a situation where he was racing with Brian Harvey got bumped, uh, and they, they uh, basically tangled and put sent uh, Lavera into the outside wall back down the inside wall and then it was on from there uh, a really wild ride uh, for that Care Bears number four a violent rollover on the front straightaway after making contact with the outside wall and getting loose in front of the 43 machine is going to put C.J. Lavera's night from bad to worse. We saw him running up front because of the way the green flag pit stop cycled through with that caution flag, put him outside of the top 10. So if he finished there, he would have been mathematically eliminated from the championship. And after that, his season is done and the chase for the championship for that number four team is down the drain. He'll move on to next week at the Homestead Miami Speedway to try to look to hang on maybe to a top three in points, a top five in points, wherever he shakes out at the end of the night. But definitely a tough break, uh, as he mentioned, going into tonight's race. He wasn't points racing. He was just going to go for broke and try to get it done. And unfortunately, a tough way to see his championship hopes fade late in the going at Phoenix. Yeah, certainly that was uh, just a, one of those racing deals where where two cars run out of real estate, they they pretty much, uh, he started making contact with the 66 of Brian Harvey approaching the exit, uh, and uh, which 
eventually just ran him up into the wall, bounced him off, Doug Roth couldn't avoid him, and so Roth got into the back of CJ, sending him down to the inside wall, and then, uh, then you saw the end result. And so uh, most of these guys on the racetrack, however, are going to stay out uh, because we're going to be restarting this race within 10 to go. And uh, so no one wants to give up the track position, knowing that it could be a while to get back up to the front, unless, of course, everyone, aside from uh, two or three cars, comes down pit road. And so we saw Dwayne Vincent making a run at Cole before this caution flag. However, I think Dwayne, it's going to be tough for him uh, because I think he started uh, put, uh, using a little bit too much right front tire. It looked like he started pushing on exits there uh, before that caution came out. However, this caution might help him uh, because we're cooling, down, we're cooling down those tires. It gives him a chance to regroup, rethink his strategy to try to get that lead from Chad Cole. However, Cole determining when this race restarts can have a nice advantage. And we've seen some other drivers wait about halfway in between when the green flag would fly and that pace car getting off onto the pit lane to get to their gas pedal and pretty much start the race. Remember, they have until that pace car hits the pit lane and when the sim actually throws the green flag to get going. Chad Cole seems like he's been going once those left side tires get down on that line of those pace car. He is gone. The lights are still on that pace car, so he has a little bit more time to think of it. But this is really the money, uh, the money start. For Dwayne Vincent, unless we see a quick caution, remember no green-white checkers in the iRacing service. Can he get it done? If we get a couple laps and then see the caution, I don't think he's going to get a shot at it. And he desperately needs to keep Chad Cole out of victory lane if he wants any sort of shot at Homestead. If they finish the way they are right now, Vincent's still in this thing, but Chad Cole will just put more points over him. And a very good job by that eight car of Chad Cole the way he has been these last two weeks to really pick it up. He won last week at Texas. If he can do it again uh, tonight at Phoenix, I guess they say that the best defense is a great offense. Yeah, absolutely. And all Dwayne Vincent can do right now is try to anticipate when that eight car is going to go on this restart. The last two restarts, Chad was going pretty early. So that might make Dwayne pretty jumpy and uh, ready to go at it. Although when you're Chad, you're trying to be unpredictable. And what he might do this restart is wait for Dwayne to possibly jump just a little bit, get a little throttle happy, and then when Dwayne has to backpedal that throttle, that's when Chad could go. Uh, that's just one of the things at your disposal here uh, on these restarts. And so uh, Dwayne is really going to have to be on his game uh, to avoid having to race uh, Jonathan Cadell or Steve Ritter here to hold on a second. He wants to just race Chad and race for this win. As the pace car is about to duck in, Chad is waiting. And uh, now he's My off, and Jonathan Cadell with a great restart. Jonathan Cadell alongside Dwayne Vincent for second position. As Vincent is able to clear Cadell coming through turns one and two I into the second position. Chad Cole has about a 10 car length lead on Dwayne. Dwayne's going to have to drive pretty hard. Coming up on next time by is going to be seven laps to go. We have a car out on the back stretch. It's the number 45 of Kale Dressback. And they might stay green here because he got to the apron out of the way. Eric Arnold's also in the grass and the 47 pulls back onto the racetrack. Kel Dressback turning that car back around way behind the field. He's going to get it going in time. And this race will remain uh, green at the moment. Uh, some battling in the middle of the pack. Guy Snyder in the 27 uh, looking to gain those spots here late in the going. Contact, the 38 is around, that's going to bring out the caution, and now this is actually lap 119, we are going to have a restart here, it's going to be a green-white checker that Dwayne Vincent is going to have one more chance at Chad Cole. Cole is remaining in the lead right now as the pace car comes out, the 38 of Mark Bratcher was turned around, looking back at the incident, it was contact from the 27 of Snyder, Snyder pushed up just a little bit in 3 and 4, uh, didn't have too much room to work with there. Uh, but certainly Snyder losing the nose coming up into Mark Bratcher and Bratcher's going to take his car to pit road and repair some of that damage and uh, see what he can get on this final restart. And then it's going to come down to, I guess this is going to be the money stop. What can Vincent do with Chad Cole? If Chad Cole goes back to back to victory lane late in the going, he may have all the momentum going for him at Homestead and that's definitely not what Dwayne Vincent is looking for, for sure. So he's going to be thinking about that all the way around as they pace under the caution flag. And he's just going to be hoping that he can find some way to keep with him on that top lane and then evidently make it work. 
and try to get around him and go to victory lane. Yeah, but, you know, it's certainly looking tough for him because uh, Chad Cole has certainly shown throughout this race that he has been the class of the field, uh, has certainly wrapped up the uh, most laps led, and if uh, if he's able to hold on for the win, that's going to be, I believe, a six-point advantage uh, to that eight car, which would result in a 33-point lead heading into Homestead, which would be gigantic. Uh, however, Jonathan Cadell made a run at uh, Dwayne Vincent that last start. Dwayne is thinking, all right, we can't have that happen again. Uh, he's not going to have very much time to make something happen here on this final restart. And so uh, Chad uh, being unpredictable that last start going pretty late. Uh, going to try to uh, switch it up again. I would imagine that he's going to read his competitors around him, sort of decide at the last minute uh, when he's going to go. Uh, but a lot of times these late restarts, you see the leader go pretty early, uh, just trying to go right with the pace car. Well, we've seen Chad do that twice already this evening, and so uh, that might be the strategy to use uh, for this final restart, which will be a green-white checker. Yeah, he had me fueled. I was anticipating him to go right away. He waited, so that's what keeps Vincent on his toes. I think we're going to see Vincent really try to time it and possibly, you know, mess it up, cause a big checkup. But he has to go for it. And you mentioned 33 points going into Homestead. That's almost finishing dead last for Chad Cole. So it's going to be interesting to see what goes down here. Yeah, Chad Cole, uh, just looking. The, and, and when you're the leader in these races, you feel fairly safe just because of those car lengths that you can pull on the start. And so uh, Cole sitting in a good position right now. Uh, some of these guys, though, very hungry behind them. Uh, Cadell looking for that first victory of the season. Uh, after uh, recently coming back into the series just uh, about a month or two ago, uh, Steve Ritter has been top five all night long, currently sitting in the fourth position. And uh, let's give a shout out to that number 20 of Mike Montesi, uh, who uh, had a pretty solid qualifying run in the seventh position, uh, faded back a little bit in the middle of the race and then started to climb back forwards through the, the uh, running order all the way up to fifth position. So Mike Montesi running fifth. And uh, Steve Gotschuk looking for a, a solid run. He's in the top 15 in points. Uh, he will be restarting in six. And actually, Ronnie Potts, uh, with a lot of damage, uh, currently shown in the seventh position. So uh, it's going to be a two-lap shootout uh, for these competitors as the, the field works their way towards turn three. This is going to decide the race. Do they make it back to the white flag, or do we wreck trying to get there and Chad Cole locks it up? What does Dwayne Vincent do, and how does the championship look? after tonight we're gonna find out as the field is doubled up and lights are off on that ford first racing mustang pace car as we work our way through turns number three and four and onto the front straightaway the pace car about to dive down there he goes chad cole goes right on the start which is different than what he did last time he gets that lead now over Dwayne vincent and will the 31 of cadell try to challenge for a second he can't do it into turn number one the good thing for Dwayne is that he got a good enough start, able to clear the 31 going down the front stretch, and now Dwayne has to put together a qualifying lap about as fast as he could run around this track, as they're actually wrecking down the back stretch. Huge wreck. Big wreck. This is going to seal the deal for Chad, but big wreck on the back stretch. They piled him in, coming off a of turn two, and it is none other than Chad Cole to victory lane. The incident happened around the number 88 machine, if we can get that up on the replay. The 88 car of Adam Roberts in a three-wide situation uh, after the 66 was in the wall. Everybody scrambled to avoid that. They went sideways in front of the field, and everybody just piled into that one. Heavy damage on lots of these race cars. The white flag is in the air alongside, the ch or alongside that yellow flag as Chad Cole is going to take his number eight machine off of turn number four under the caution flag and does another stellar performance two for two with max points and chad cole is going to defend that championship going into the finale yeah that's uh this is going to be a strong point lead now Dwayne vincent is not going to be mathematically eliminated uh but he's going to need some help here as uh they've already taken the stripe Dwayne vincent with another solid top five racking up an incredible run that he's had this season uh, certainly not the uh, point situation that he was looking forward or looking to have heading into Homestead, uh, but this is a statement race by Chad Cole. That's two wins in a row, uh, and that's his 11th on the year. And so Cadell congratulating Cole 
Uh, and it's a, it's a party in Wisconsin tonight. Is uh, I think he'll be able to sleep a little bit easier going into Homestead, knowing that he's got some breathing room. He's got a cushion in the point series. Uh, certainly, it's not uh, sealed, uh, but this is a, a big step forward towards uh, taking that championship home. Mentioned two for two for Chad Cole with on his rear spoiler saying, Matt Kenseth, he's my guy. Chad Cole going to victory lane and making it two weeks in a row and win number 11 as he parks it at the start finish line. We are going to go to our final commercial break. When we come back, we're going to talk with our top three finishers and get you ready for Homestead in the post race show. Again, you're watching ETV Motorsports Live's live coverage of the 2013 Real Sim Racing Full Throttle Cup Series. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. And we are back live at the Phoenix International Raceway, just wrapping up here after 125 laps of mostly green flag racing. They pile them in there, coming to the white flag, and it's going to be Chad Cole going to victory lane for the second week in a row. It's got to be big in points for him, and Harrison's joining him in victory lane. Yeah, Chad Cole uh, earning his 11th win of the season on November 11th. So you could say this is the day of the 11s, 11-11, 11th win. Chad Cole with a points lead of 33 points. If I really want to stretch it, we could say that's 11 times three. But anyway, Chad, you have to be feeling a lot better heading into the final race of the season. I believe a 33-point lead. And so obviously it's not sealed, it's not official, but that gives you quite the cushion. Yeah, it feels good going in, but I know that still anything can happen. Just, just need to get through Homestead yet. It's kind of kind of weird racing tonight with the I feel like the roles were reversed. I've been chasing Dwayne all season, and tonight it's he was chasing me down, and uh, he had me sweating bullets right there at the end with all those restarts. He was hanging tough. Yeah, certainly this was a, a second win in a row. You mentioned last week uh, that you weren't just going to come out here and and ride around; that you were going for these wins, and certainly proved that tonight. And uh, this race, a lot of those late restarts, as you mentioned, that kept you on your toes. A lot of green flag runs in the in the middle there. And uh, so this race, uh, it certainly wasn't as easy as it looked, but uh, you were certainly in control. Uh, were there any close calls for you uh, throughout the middle portion of the race? Um, not so much. Had to battle some lack of traffic there, but didn't didn't really encounter too much because caution came out before I got to the whole whole cluster of them. So. Caution, I mean, I, I did kind of want to go green, but I'm glad I didn't have to battle through lap traffic there because it it's tough. I know Dwayne was really closing on me when I caught the tail end of the field the first time. Yeah, we saw Dwayne at the end driving really hard. Uh, was there any, did you have to change your line at all to make sure he didn't get underneath you? What was the strategy to make sure that he couldn't uh, get his nose underneath that eight car? Uh, just try to get good restarts, kind of 
try to keep him un unpredictable so he doesn't know when I'm going. But I think <laughs> I did go on pace car most times. I think I only switched it up once. But uh, yeah, just, that was just key, just to get clear of him in turn one, so I could use that outside line because that's kind of the preferred line through there. If you if you're working on the bottom, it gets pretty loose underneath someone off of two. So I, I just needed that middle line through two and. And heading into that final race of the year with that uh, that 33 point lead, uh, is this a situation where you're going to go out there and, and uh, not treat it like any other race, or do you think you'll be on your toes a little bit more, where maybe keep just conservative enough to make sure that you don't put yourself in a position that could potentially uh, damage that race car to the point where it has to be taken behind the wall? Yeah, you're exactly right. I just need to try to be smart, run a smart race, and not do anything stupid, not put myself in the bad spots, and really like to uh, finish off strong. I haven't uh, I haven't raced cup car at Homestead yet, ever. I mean, I missed the finale last year in the cup car, so just going to need to do races again this week to practice up, keep up with Dwayne. On this 11th night of the 11th month of the year at 11 p.m., talking to Chad Cole, he is the winner tonight at uh, Phoenix International Raceway, and so uh, heading into that final race, uh, Chad, who made it happen for you? Uh, who would you like to thank? Who makes it happen for that eight bunch? Yeah, I need to thank Guy L. Brooks. He was spotting for me to spotting for me tonight, keeping me uh, informed about what other cars were doing. Um, uh, just trying to be a second set of eyes for me because I um, kind of get tunnel vision just going forward. Try to focus on the track ahead of me, and and guys can kind of catch me off guard coming from behind. Uh, so Guy L. Brooks for spotting. Hippies Paint Shop for the great paint work he does. You can find them on Facebook. Just uh, search Hippies Paint Shop. And, of course, Axo Sanitary for sponsoring this eight car for the final segment. And uh, Bob Earl Race Chassis for sponsoring the Full Throttle Cup Series. That's that's awesome that they could really uh, help out the RSR and sponsor us back-to-back -back years in the Full Throttle Cup Series. It's really great. That's tonight's winner, Chad Cole, and Evan has caught up with tonight's second-place finisher. And that's right down here on the pit lane with none other than Dwayne Vincent. Dwayne, you're going to bring home your number 13 Ford Fusion. Second place for the second week in a row, and you're going to enter Homestead as second in the championship standings. Uh, first and foremost, how was the race? Oh, it was a good race. Just had nothing for Chad Cole, man. He, he was on his game. Talk us through that long green flag run, and then we saw the, uh, the green flag pit stop start to cycle through, and then we saw a caution flag, which hindered some of the fast race cars who had already made their pit stop was the idea going to be to pit when chad cole did or did you have a set time of when you wanted to hit the pit lane oh man in this league you can't pit under green <laughs> I, I was going to run it till i had one lap left and definitely and walk us through those final restarts we heard harrison talk to it with chad cole a little bit you really had to nail those starts chad was going right on the drop of the pace car he mixed it up with i think with the second to last restart there did you think any time mary maybe on that last restart or two did you think you really had a shot at it and uh, was the bumper ever an option i had a I, I thought i think on the second to last restart that was the closest i was to him the entire race I thought I might have had a shot then. No, I wasn't going to put the bumper to him. Um, I know Martinsville incident looked like it was intentional, but it wasn't. Um, I wouldn't have done that to him. Uh, I like racing Chad clean. He's always raced me clean. Um, but that, that was the closest I had been to him the entire race. And I thought I had a shot, and he slowly started pulling away. And definitely you were the first one over to radio to congratulate him on his victory think that you know like what, what was your car missing that that eight bunch had over you that really gave him that little bit of an advantage that kept him up there that one spot in front of you he just managed his tires better than i did um he just had the line down man i was I, again kind of like at texas uh just overdriving it to to try to either keep up with him or outrun him like i did at texas trying to and i just ate my tires up and and that's where he got me tire management now we have to look forward to next week where we wrap things up after a great year of racing, uh, obviously with the Full Throttle Cup Series here on ETV. Going into Homestead, 
a pretty big deficit you're going to find yourself in mathematically. You're the only one that can take that away from Chad Cole. He's obviously going to have to have some major trouble in order for you to get up to that number one spot before things are said and done. Looking forward to there. All you can do is run your race and finish P1. What's your confidence at that racetrack? Uh, I, I like Miami. Um, hopefully, uh, maybe they'll have an electrical storm over there at George Chad Lewis. <laughs> <laughs> and he'll lose all his electricity for about an hour. No. Uh, Miami's a fun track. I, I like it, and uh, it should be some good racing. I'm looking forward to it. Well, definitely a top two finish. Solid for you and your 13 bunch. Who makes it happen? Any shout outs you want to throw? The mic's all yours. Uh, I'd like to say uh, thank you to all the guys at Red Ass. Uh, Bob Earl for sponsoring this stuff. And like Chad said, two years in a row, that's, that's pretty cool. Um, it's nice of him to do that. Um, all you guys at ETV, uh, all the guys at RSR, and uh, my dad at home watching this stuff. Uh, so again, we tried, man. Just couldn't do it. Another solid night out for the number 13. Just not quite enough to get P1. He's going to go for it next week, though, at Homestead to try to clinch the championship. And that is Dwayne Vincent. Good luck next week also. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Now, Harrison, I do believe you're down on pit road with our third place finisher, number 31 of Jonathan Goodell, who picks up his fourth top five of the season. Yeah, John Goodell, as you mentioned, four top fives. And they all seem to be coming lately. Uh, second at Martinsville just uh, two races ago here in the Full Throttle Cup Series. Also a second at Charlotte uh, just uh, two races before that, I believe. And so, uh, John, you started uh, you started in the top ten, I do believe. And it just seemed like methodically worked your way through the field uh, until you were racing Twain for second right up to the end of the race. And so how was the race from your perspective? Uh, honestly, I have no idea how I ended up in the top three. I just... Uh tried to mind my own business and they're coming to the end with all these cautions coming out i ended up in fourth and passed steve Ritter there on the outside for third and all the cautions came out there at the end and somehow i ended up in the top three again and, and uh with 16 starts on the year obviously not in the point situation uh but looking at these runs that you've put together uh is it looking like you're you're looking to come back to the full throttle cup series full time next season uh because it looks like you could contend here I really, really wish I could. My schedule doesn't allow for it. Uh, like, I won't miss next week, um, miss the season finale because of my schedule. But uh, I'm going to try to make every race I can and hopefully get a substitute here and there. And maybe we'll make the chase, uh, do what Denny Hamlin couldn't do this year and miss a few races and make the chase and see how it goes from there. Yeah, certainly have the ability to do that, especially with a wild card situation. Uh haven't won a race yet this year, but a bunch of top fives here showing that uh, it could happen any race where you capture that first win. Uh, and so, uh, I, I used to mention that you're not running Homestead next week, so this is sort of the, uh, the uh, going away party uh, for the 31 Cup car this year. But overall, what would you say was your, your favorite race that you ran this year in the Full Throttle Cup Series? Obviously, you put together a lot of good finishes, have to have some uh, good memories. Well, honestly, the last few weeks, uh, other than last week at Texas where I just got caught up in somebody else's mess, I somehow I've been running, uh, you know, top five here the past few races. I, I haven't really been doing anything different. And uh, this past few weeks has let me know that I still got it. I, I still know what I'm doing. And hopefully one of these days we can pull out a W. But uh, let's say my favorite would be maybe Charlotte just because it, it felt like I was exhausted into the race and it was a hard fault second place. And, uh, so yeah, definitely say Charlotte is one of my favorite races this year. Yeah, definitely. That was Charlotte. Got that second place to Chad Cole with that, who has that 33 point lead heading into Homestead. But, uh, it's been a good season and, uh, been good seeing that 31 car out there. And, uh, who makes it happen for the 31? Uh, who would you like to thank? Any shout outs? I'd like to thank, uh, Scott Beatles out there at shutmasters.com for, uh, sponsoring me this year. Um, it is Veterans Day. I'd like to thank all my fellow veterans out there. I mean, there are some guys that are out there fighting on the front lines. And uh, like I said, I'm missing next week because I'm going to be sitting at a desk for the Navy. But uh, there's some guys that are out there that are, you know, doing the real work out there for the military. So I don't have to. So I'd like to thank those guys. And uh, thank RSR and ETV, uh, especially the admins over there at RSR for you know, we had a kind of rough and tumble season there, but, you know, we came back here at the end of the season, came out strong, and hopefully it's some momentum to build into next season. That's uh, tonight's third place finisher, uh, John Cadell. 
And so, uh, Evan, an interesting race here at Phoenix. A lot of green runs, but a lot of uh, close, uh, a lot of restarts at the end, keeping the competition close and keeping Chad on his toes. And a great night it was, 125 laps in the book. So we look forward to next week where we wrap things up after 35 great races with the Real Sim Racing Full Throttle Cup Series on ETV Motorsports Live. It is Homestead Miami Speedway next Monday the 18th at 9.30 Eastern Time. Don't forget also coming up this week on ETV as well. Tomorrow night, the NASCAR iRacing.com Pro Series. Wednesday night, MIRL. And then Harrison, I do believe you're going to be over with the Asphalt Assault guys as they wrap up their championship. Thursday night, a little bit of a different picture as Stefan Marinek and Bobby Terrell find themselves within eight points of each other going into that race. Yeah, certainly if you enjoyed the racing here tonight at the uh, with the RSR Full Throttle Cup Series, uh, the Asphalt Assault Series, uh, same league, different series. Some of the drivers are the same, and a couple others who only six of the nationwide car. That points battle is a separation of eight points, so that's that'll also be a show to watch, as you mentioned. Make sure to tune in to that and also everything else that you can check out at ETV. You guys, thank you for tuning in to another presentation of the Real Sim Racing Full Throttle Cup Series. Again, sponsored by Bob Earl Racing on ETV Motorsports. Live for Harrison Wildlitz, Laura Lawson down in the production hauler, working the cameras and getting us on the air. My name is Evan Posoko. Thank you for tuning in, and we will see you next week when we crown a champion. Conti comes up at a corner number four, and the checkered flag, he wins this